Welcome to the Princeton Longevity Center video series on preventing heart disease. I'm Dr. David Fine, Medical Director at Princeton Longevity, and in this video we're going to talk about using cholesterol as a way to predict heart attack risk. Many of us tend to think of cholesterol as a disease. In fact, it's really better thought of as a risk factor. By that, we mean it's a statistical predictor that on a group basis allows us to get a handle on whether a particular group of people are at high risk or low risk. If we take a group of people who have high cholesterol and compare them to a similar group of people with low cholesterol, over a given period of time, we are in fact likely to see more heart attacks in the high cholesterol group. However, we're also going to see many people in the high cholesterol group who don't have heart attacks, and there will be people in the low cholesterol group who do have heart attacks. That's the limitation of a risk factor. It's useful in groups, but is not well applied to individuals. The problem is that we need to treat individuals. And relying on risk factors such as cholesterol for deciding whether or not we need to treat you for coronary artery disease and try to prevent a heart attack, well, as a good example, that's like using your salt intake as a way to decide whether or not we need to put you on a blood pressure pill. In modern day medicine, we can easily measure your blood pressure and decide whether or not you actually have the disease. So not many people would be in favor of treating you solely on the basis of risk factors. Unfortunately, for too many of us, we're still treating people for coronary disease on the basis of their risk factors rather than actually determining whether or not they have the disease. With today's technology, we can, in fact, determine who is developing plaque and who isn't. The problem with cholesterol levels is that they're just not predictive enough on an individual basis. This data from the Framingham Heart Study shows the distribution of cholesterol levels across the population in the study, and you have a typical bell-shaped curve where at the low end there are a small number of people who have very low cholesterols. At the other end we have a small number of people with high cholesterol and a lot of people in the middle who tend to have cholesterol somewhere in the mid-200s. The problem here is though that we are showing those people who ultimately developed heart disease in the red line and those people who never developed heart disease during the period of the study with the yellow line. There's not a big difference here. If your cholesterol is high, 350, well yes that puts you in the group that does develop cardiovascular disease, but it also puts you within the group that doesn't. Same thing at the opposite end, your cholesterol may be 180, but that puts you in the group that doesn't develop cardiac disease but it also puts you within the group that does. There isn't any particular cholesterol level that I can look at that says, yes, you fall into one group and not the other group. And in fact, in the Framingham study, 66% of the patients who had heart attacks over a 12-year period of time did not have cholesterol levels or LDL levels, the bad type of cholesterol that we typically use today to decide on treatment, they did not have levels that were high enough to have qualified them for treatment. In a more recent study, looking at 137,000 people who are hospitalized for a heart attack, 75% of those people who had heart attacks had what we consider to be normal cholesterol levels by today's standards. Their LDLs were under 130. At that level, we would typically not have recommended drug therapy for those people on the basis of their cholesterol levels, which means in terms of deciding who we ought to treat on an individual basis, we would be wrong three quarters of the time. So how do we use cholesterol? Well, I think a better way is to say that we need to, de to define an abnormal cholesterol level as being the level at which you, as an individual, are making plaque. So for example, let's say a patient comes in to see me and has a cholesterol level of 150, and their LDL level is terrific at 65. This is not a patient who ordinarily we would recommend drug therapy for. But let's say we do a heart scan and we take a look at their arteries. Using a 64 slice CT scanner we can create an image of the coronary arteries and here you see a portion of their artery right along here and these white spots represent calcium deposits within the arteries. Wherever we see calcium there's coronary artery disease there. We can measure the overall amount that's present, quantify it, and come up with an assessment of this patient's heart attack risk. And in this case, with this much plaque, this patient turned out to have a risk of about 10% per year. I think if I told you that your heart attack risk was 10% over the coming year, but your cholesterol level was 150, so you don't need to worry about it, you probably wouldn't be too impressed. And in fact, this is a patient who, even though their cholesterol level is quite low, needs aggressive treatment. On the other hand, if you come in with a cholesterol level of 300, 
but your arteries are perfectly clean, we can tell you that your risk of having a heart attack in the next few years is so low that putting you on medication will probably not make a measurable reduction in that risk. So in the 21st century, with our ability to look directly at the arteries, we can now sort out who are the people who are actually making plaque and need to be aggressively treated, and who are the people who, even though they may have an elevated cholesterol level, are not going to get a significant benefit from taking a drug to treat their risk factor because they don't have the disease. Over the years, we've gradually come to believe that because lowering cholesterol in those people who do have coronary artery disease, that it must be cholesterol that in fact is the cause of the disease. But I think another way to look at this is that the same factors that raise your cholesterol, sedentary lifestyle, being overweight, having a poor diet, etc., will also raise your heart attack risk independently. Those are things that not only raise your cholesterol level, but also contribute to inflammation that cause you to go on to make plaque. So it is not as simple as there's a cause and effect relationship between cholesterol and coronary disease, but rather high cholesterol levels can be seen as a marker for lifestyle factors that may put you at higher risk, but do not automatically mean that you have coronary artery disease because heart attacks frequently occur in people who have normal cholesterol levels and many people with high cholesterol levels don't have heart attacks. The only way to really sort out who needs to be treated for high cholesterol levels, there's only one technology that will do that and that is by looking directly at the arteries.